Whether you're among the 500,000 newcomers to Canada in 2023 or thinking of establishing yourself and your family in this beautiful country, it's only natural to aspire to secure a strong financial foundation, which is key to a prosperous financial future. My name is Griffin Milks, and in this video, my goal is to equip you with the essential knowledge needed to embark on your savings and investment journey as a newcomer to Canada. So let's dive into the fundamental steps to help you make the most of your financial opportunities in Canada. Now in this video, we'll consider the assumption though that you've already secured a job that provides you with sufficient disposable income to begin constructing a solid financial base, all while keeping your future savings and investment goals in mind. If you're still in a position where your income only covers basic living expenses, bookmark this video for a future date as this is still relevant information, but you need to first focus on increasing your income to allow for your income to expand exceed expenses, creating a gap that can be saved and invested. So get ready as we'll be covering savings accounts, investment accounts, and the fundamentals to invest in real estate or purchasing your first home. All right, so upon arrival in Canada, one of the initial steps you should take is to establish a bank account to facilitate the receipt of your income from work, where this process is fairly standard and familiar worldwide. In Canada, the majority of individuals opt for their day-to-day -day banking needs through one of the five major financial institutions, including TD, RBC, Scotiabank, CIBC, and BMO. Additionally, there are a few smaller banks such as Laurentian Bank, National Bank, Canadian Western Bank, and a few others. And I'm not making a specific recommendation here as checking accounts tend to offer relatively similar features across institutions. However, it's customary to select one of the prominent big five banks for your primary checking account. Now, when conducting your research for a checking account though, it's essential to note that many of these institutions do regularly offer temporary promotions throughout the year as incentives to attract new customers. For for instance, while I was preparing this video, I observed that BMO was currently promoting a $450 cash bonus for opening a checking account. I do want to clarify that I'm not endorsing any specific institution and I have no affiliations with any of them, but it's worth keeping an eye out for these types of offers as you're doing your research. Once you have a checking account open, it's only natural that you'll also want to open up a savings account for any excess income that you want to keep liquid and out of investment accounts while still earning a bit of interest income. Now, you'll soon realize that the savings accounts provided by the major five banks that we just spoke about don't typically offer competitive interest rates on your savings. So this is why many Canadians opt to open a savings account with an alternative or smaller online bank that provides more attractive rates on their savings. In fact, I've recently released a full dedicated video on this very subject that I would strongly encourage you to watch after this video, as some of these savings accounts offer interest rates exceeding 5%, which is quite appealing when you consider it's essentially free money that you're accruing on idle cash. Now, most people do suggest that you save up at a minimum three months worth of living expenses in a savings account as a basic financial cushion for yourself, which I tend to agree is a wise practice. All right, so you're in good shape now, you have a job earning you income, a checking account to receive your income as well as make payments, and a savings account that's earning a bit of interest. It's at this point that you'll probably want to start investing your excess capital. So this is where investment accounts come into play. But first, let's talk about credit cards. By no means are you obligated to have a credit card in Canada. However, it's advisable to consider applying for a credit card soon after activating your checking account so that you can start building credit in Canada, which is super important for any loans that you might be wanting to take out in the future. And do keep in mind that it might take a week or two for your credit card to be delivered to you by mail. So applying right away could save you some time if you're new to the country. What's important to understand here is that your credit history serves as your financial reputation essentially in Canada, making it a pivotal aspect for newcomers to prioritize. This credit history is instrumental in helping lenders assess your credit worthiness and the associated risks when extending loans. Importantly, your Canadian credit history commences once you begin using credit 
and repaying it, which is one of the reasons why starting to get a credit card early in your journey as a Canadian would most likely be a wise thing to do. Acquiring and responsibly using a credit card represents the initial step in establishing this financial track record here in Canada. It's worth noting that newcomers may not immediately qualify for all types of credit cards upon their arrival in Canada though. Nevertheless, some major banks such as RBC, for example, offer specially tailored newcomer credit cards that are accessible even without an existing Canadian credit history. Now, once you do have some credit history and want to apply for some more beneficial travel credit cards though, make sure to check out this video right here that I've made covering two of the best Canadian travel credit cards for points and free travel essentially. Additionally, if you wanna learn more about how to build up your credit and monitor it completely for free, I've made a full dedicated video for that as well that you can check out after watching today's video. Okay, now in Canada, we distinguish between registered investment accounts and non-registered investment accounts. The primary distinction here lies in the fact that registered investment accounts are subject to Canadian government regulations and they offer Canadians the opportunity to leverage specific tax sheltering advantages, which can vary depending on the type of account in question. The key registered investment account that you might want to consider utilizing include the TFSA, the RRSP, our ESP and the recently introduced FHSA. Each of these investment accounts offer distinct tax sheltering benefits catering to different financial goals and purposes. So let's begin by discussing the TFSA. The Canadian Tax-Free Savings Account, or TFSA for short, is a popular financial tool that allows Canadian residents to save and invest money without incurring taxes on the income generated within the account. Unlike a traditional saving or investment account, TFSAs offer the flexibility to hold a variety of investments though, including stocks, bonds, exchange-traded funds, mutual funds, and more, making it a versatile option for long-term savings and investments to meet your investment goals. Now, contributions to a TFSA are made with after-tax dollars, meaning that the money you contribute has already been subject to income tax. However, the unique benefit of a TFSA FSA is that any income, capital gains, or interest income earned within the account remains completely tax-free, even upon withdrawing. Additionally, you can withdraw funds from your TFSA at any time for any purpose without incurring taxes or penalties. That said, there are some limitations where the annual contribution limit for TFSAs is determined by the Canadian government and varies from year to year. However, unused contribution room accumulates for years that you haven't made a contribution, allowing individuals to catch up on their contributions if they haven't fully maximized their TFSAs in previous years. By the way, this starts the year you turn 18 or the year you become a Canadian resident. Overall, this flexibility makes TFSAs a valuable tool for both short-term and long-term financial goals, such as saving for a home, a major purchase, or retirement. By the way, once again, if you want to learn more about TFSA specifically, I'd highly recommend that you check out my fully dedicated video on the topic that you can check out right here. I know that makes a lot of videos to bookmark. However, there's a lot to learn if you're a newcomer to Canada. Let's now speak about the second registered investment account that you'll want to consider being the RRSP. The Canadian Registered Retirement Savings Plan, or RRSP for short, is another powerful financial tool created to assist Canadians in saving for their retirement while enjoying substantial tax advantages, which work as follows. What's mainly beneficial is that when you contribute to your RRSP, you can deduct the contribution amount from your taxable income, effectively reducing your annual tax liability. And this deduction has the potential to yield significant tax savings for each year that you make a contribution. Once you do make contributions, investments within an RSP continue to grow tax-free within the account until you decide to make a withdrawal down the line where those withdrawals become taxable income. So like the TFSA, you have a diverse range of investment options to choose from though, including stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, and more, and the returns on these investments remained untaxed annually, allowing your savings to grow and compound over time. Now, RRSP contribution limits are determined based on your earned income from the prior year, meaning contribution limits, they will differ from
from person to person. Like the TFSA though, any unused contribution room from prior years can very well be carried forward, providing you with the opportunity to catch up on your savings in the future. If you're new to Canada, it's likely that you're arriving with your family, including children for whom you want to begin saving for their education. This is where the Registered Education Savings Program, commonly known as the RESP, becomes a crucial part of your financial planning. The Canadian Registered Education Savings Plan is yet another valuable savings tool designed to help parents and guardians save for their children's post-secondary education. RESPs offer several key features and benefits that make it a popular choice for Canadian families. One significant advantage of the RESP is the tax benefits that it provides. So while contributions to an RESP are not tax deductible like the RRSP, the funds within the plan do grow tax-free while in the account. When the beneficiary enrolls in a qualified educational program, they can then withdraw that money and the income earned is typically taxed at the beneficiary's lower tax rate. So this means that RESP contributions can grow more effectively over time. In addition to tax advantages, the Canadian government offers incentives to encourage RESP contributions from parents and guardians. So the Canada Education Savings Grant and the Canada Learning Bond are some of these government grants that can and substantially boost your savings within the account for your child. These grants add extra funds to the RESP, enhancing your ability to save for education purposes. RESPs are also flexible in terms of investment options. They can be open for a specific child or beneficiary, and they offer a range of investment choices, just like the RRSP and TFSA. And it's really this flexibility that allows you to tailor the investment strategy to your family's needs and risk tolerance. Now, while there is no annual limit for RESP contributions, there is a lifetime contribution limit per beneficiary, which is $50,000. More Moreover, if one child designated as a beneficiary decides not to pursue post-secondary education, the funds can be transferred to either another eligible beneficiary within the same family, which is a feature that enhances the long-term flexibility and utility of the RESP. As you settle into life in Canada, it's only natural to aspire to save for a home that can accommodate your family's needs. However, it's crucial to be mindful of the fact that Canada is currently grappling with a housing crisis, which has significantly elevated the cost of home ownership. This situation not only makes affording a home a formidable challenge, but also extends the timeline for saving up for a down payment. So in response to this, the Canadian government has recently launched the newest registered investment account called the First Home Savings Account or FHSA for short. Canada's First Home Savings Account is a dedicated savings tool aimed at helping Canadians save for their first home where this specialized account comes with distinct features that make it a valuable option for those aspiring to become homeowners. Now, just like the other registered investment accounts, the FHSA offers tax advantages, in this case, mixing those of the RRSP and the TFSA. So contributions made to the account are both tax deductible and the investment income and capital gains generated within the account remain tax exempt over time, all of which allows your savings to grow more efficiently and accelerates your progress towards home ownership. Each year, you can make contributions up to $8,000 to this account, up to a lifetime limit of $40,000, which could be achieved in five years. And again, these contributions grow tax-free like the TFSA. So if you're truly saving for a home, this is a great account to utilize. What's more is that when you're ready to enter the housing market, you can withdraw both your contributions and investment earnings without incurring any taxes. This unique feature provides a substantial financial boost, making it easier for individuals and families to afford that first home. Another noteworthy feature of the FHSA is its portability. If you do decide not to use the funds for your first home purchase, you have the option to roll over these savings into your registered retirement savings plan, RRSP that we spoke about earlier, without incurring any penalties, which is pretty awesome. This ensures that your savings continue to contribute to your long-term financial well-being. 
Now, if you want to learn more about the FHSA, once again, I've made a fully dedicated video on the topic that you can watch on my channel, and I'll leave links down below in this video's description to all of the videos that I've mentioned in this one. By the way, you can also open up a TFSA, RRSP, FHSA, as well as RESP with Quest Trade. Link down below in this video's description. You'll get $15 for free when signing up with that link. So I really hope this video helps you better understand what some of the steps are in Canada to start saving and investing. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to answer as many as I can. And once again, my name is Griffin Milks. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about saving, investing, and finance content in general.